Hello and welcome to the MET Plus training for compiling MET. If you'd like to learn more about the MET Plus software, please refer to dtcenter.org. Please note that this content was developed for MET Plus version 3.1. My name is Julie Prostopnik and I am a software engineer working on the development and support of the MET Plus components. In this video, we will step through the process of installing the Model Evaluation Tools Verification Package using a compilation script that is accessible on our website. This is the website for MET. The information we need is on the download page, so we will go to that page now by clicking on the download link on the right side of this page. Detailed information about the software installation can be found in Chapter 2 of the MET User's Guide, but for this session, we are going to be using the information on the Downloads page. The MET package has several external libraries that are required for compiling and building MET. Under the section Externals Libraries Needed to Build, build MET, we can see that the Bufferlib, NetCDF4, HDF5, Zlib, and GSL libraries are required and the grib to see HDF4, HDFEOS, Cairo, and FreeType libraries are optional. Now we will step through the process of installing the MET package and its dependent libraries. You will need to decide on a location where you want to install MET. Then create a directory using the name of the version of MET that you are installing. In this case, I have created a directory called 9.1 since I'm installing version 9.1 of the MET software and I'll go into that directory in just a moment. But first, we want to stay on the download page and right-click on compilemetall.sh and select Copy Link Address. Now I will go over to my terminal window, type wget space, and paste in the link that I just copied. This got the compile script. Now I will go back to the download page and I will right click on the tarfiles.tgz package and I will select copy link address and I'll go back to my terminal window and I will type wget space and paste in the link that I just copied. This takes a little bit longer because there, it's a bigger package. Okay, so now we will unpack the files that we just uh, got from the MET website. So we'll run tar zxf and then the name of the compile scripts and tar zxf and the tar files package. And we can see that those were unpacked okay. So we can go ahead and remove the tgz files. Okay. While the tar files directory contains MET's library dependencies, it does not yet contain the MET package, so we'll need to get the MET package for the version of MET that we'd like to install. We always recommend getting the latest stable release of MET, and in that case, the version is 9.1. So let's go back to the web page, and if we scroll up, I can see the latest and recommended download is right here, MET 9.1 tar gz. So I'm going to copy the link address. I'm going to go back to my terminal window. I'm going to go into the tar files directory. And I'm going to type wget space. And I'm going to paste in the location that I just copied. And that got us the MET package. So if I do an ls, I can see here that MET 9.1 now exists in this directory. I'm going to go back up a level. And we now have everything we need to install MET on this machine. The compilation script expects some environment variables to be set in a configuration file to be passed to the script. To save time, I created this file in advance, but I will go over each of the needed environment variables. The configuration file is named install underscore MET underscore env dot Hera. Hera is the name of the machine that we will be working on. Looking in the file, We can see that the first three lines contain the module use and the module load commands. 
These are loading the Intel compiler and the Python package via Anaconda on this machine. If you are installing on a machine that does not use modules, be sure that the compiler executables, for example GCC, ICC, etc., are in your path environment variable. And for Python embedding, make sure that the Python version 3.6.3 or higher executable is in your path environment variable as well. The MET tool includes the ability to embed Python to a limited degree. Users may use Python scripts and whatever associated Python packages they wish in order to prepare 2D gridded data fields, point observations, and matched pairs as input to the MET tools. Our installation will include the MET Python embedding functionality. Next in the configuration file is test base, which should be set to the installation directory, the full path including the 9.1 directory you recently created. Then we will set the compiler. The format here is the name of the compiler underscore the version. So in this case we're using Intel underscore 18.0.5.274 because that's the version of the Intel compiler that we're using. For the GNU family of compilers, use GNU, GNU, for the compiler name. For the Intel family of compilers, use Intel, ICS, IPS, or another name depending on your system. For the PGI family of compilers, use PGI for the compiler name. The next variable to set is the MET subdir, which is the location where the top level MET subdir is. For example, MET 9.1. I typically set this value uh, to be the value of te the test base environment variable. Next, we need to tell the script the name of the MET tarball. In this case, the value is MET-9.1.2020.0815. For this tutorial, we are compiling MET and its dependent libraries on a machine that uses module files, so we will set use modules to true. If you are compiling on a machine that does not use module files, please set use modules to false. The next environment variable is Python module. If you are on a machine that does not use module files, simply exclude this variable entirely from your file. If you are on a machine that does use module files, you will need to set this variable. The format is the name of the Python module to load, followed by an underscore, and then the version number. In this case, the value is anaconda underscore latest, but it could also look something like python underscore 3.6.3. If you wish to have the Python embedding functionality, you'll want to set the next three environment variables, metpython, metpythoncc, and metpythonld. Metpython should be set to the location containing the bin, include, lib, and shared subdirectories for Python. In this case, we're using an anaconda location, but often it is in a location like slash user, slash local, slash python3. MetPythonCC should be set to dash uppercase I followed by the directory containing the Python include files. In this case, the value is the value of the MetPython environment variable slash include slash Python 3.7m. You may be able to get this information by running Python 3 dash config dash dash C flags. However, in some cases, like on this machine, Running the python3 config command provides additional information that is not necessary to include. And I'll demonstrate that here. But first, I need to load the Python module. And now, if we type python3 config c flags, you can see that there is a lot more information than we actually need to set our variable. So the important part that we need is this beginning part here. Uh, the second part, there's actually a second dash i, uh, but the paths are the same. So we only need one of those. So we have set that right here. Met Python LD should be set to dash uppercase L followed by the directory containing the Python library files, then a space and dash lowercase l followed by the necessary Python libraries to link to. In this case, we actually set two different directories to link with, which was determined by running python3 dash config dash dash ld flags. And I will demonstrate that here. And you can see here, we have two paths with a dash uppercase l. So we have those listed up here as well. And then 
We also need to set the libraries to link with all these lowercase dash L's and additional information as well. And those are tacked on here uh, at the end. And please note that the backslashes are necessary in the example shown. Okay, so let's clear the screen and we'll print out the configuration file again. So finally, the last variable to set is set D64 bit. Now this should be set to false if your version of the grib to c library was not compiled with the d64-bit option, but set to true if your version of the grib to c library was compiled with the d64-bit option. The d64-bit option should be either used for compiling both the grib to c library and met or for neither. By default, compile met all.sh will install the grib to c library without the d64-bit option. Now we are ready to run the installation script to install MET and its library dependencies. To do this, we will make sure we are in our top level test space directory, which we are, and we will run the name of the script, and then we will pass it the configuration file. As the script runs, you'll see screen output telling you the libraries that are being installed, and then you'll see the MET package being installed. Once the MET installation is finished, you will see the text finished compiling at followed by the date and time. Because the installation can take a while, I ran through it previously in the same area and saved off the screen output and the installation in a 9.1 underscore pre-install directory, which I'll take you to now so that we can take a look at that screen output. Okay. So looking at the screen output, you can see uh, some of the environment variables that we set and also uh, the LD library path printed out. Sometimes that can be helpful in debugging any problems with the installation. It shows you uh, the directory where it is compiling the libraries, and that is in the directory that you set up, 9.1, uh, followed by an external lib subdirectory. Uh, we've set use modules to true, and you can see that it's loading the Intel compiler. Uh, we can see the paths to our compilers there. In this case, we're using the Intel compilers, so it's pointing to ICC and iFort. Then you can see a load of Anaconda latest so that the Python module is loaded. So the first library we see here is GSL, as you saw on the last screen. That's the first one to uh, compile and install. And then it moves on to bufferlib. You can see there's a warning here. That warning can safely be ignored. And then uh, we move on to compiling zlib libpng and jasper, which are all dependencies of the g2c library, which you see next. After uh, g2c lib is installed, it starts to compile hdf4, followed by hdfeos, and then hdf5, netcdfc, and netcdfcxx. Uh, those are all required libraries of MET. And then you can see that it moves on to compiling MET. And you can see all the environment variables that are set up within the script for installing MET. And then it runs make, make install, make test. And you can see here at the bottom where it says finish compiling ad and the date and the time. So it looks like we got a successful compilation of MET, but it's always a good idea to check for errors in the make test log file. So we're going to do a quick check by running grep i error. And we're going to look in the make test log file and nothing returned, so our make test ran successfully. Uh, since we don't receive any errors, it looks like our installation went smoothly. If your installation did not go smoothly in this aspect or some other aspect, please email met underscore help at ucar.edu with a description of the problem that you experienced and we'll provide assistance. This information is also located on the MET webpage under user support. Click on that for you now, and you can see right here. So please, if you have any questions, uh, go ahead and send us an email, and we'll help you. And thank you so much for watching.